framers of the Constitution undertook two basic approaches to limit the authority of government. Their philosophical objective was to protect specific rights and liberties of the individual against the authority of government. One means to accomplish that objective was to list these specific rights in the Constitution and deny government the authority to abridge those rights. This is the function of the Bill of Rights. If the right of free speech is such a cherished right, and if government is seen as the principal threat to that right, then it makes sense to write it into the Constitution and specifically deny government the power to abridge that right. If the right of free worship is a fundamental civil liberty, and if history teaches us that government is the main threat to religious freedom, then writing it into the Constitution and declaring that government shall not violate that right makes a good deal of sense. The Bill of Rights is not simply a listing of the civil liberties rights of American citizens, is a list of things that government may not do, authority that government may not exercise. The First Amendment begins with the phrase, Congress shall make no law, and then lists a half dozen rights Congress may not abridge in its exercise of legislative authority. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. We're supposed to understand that this clause is implied with each successive provision of the Bill of Rights. Congress shall make no law prohibiting the free exercise of religion. Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of the press, etc. Then we move to the Second Amendment and we find that Congress shall make no law abridging the right of the people to keep and bear arms, and so on, with the remaining amendments. There are a number of provisions in the main body of the Constitution. The document drafted by the delegates to the Philadelphia Convention in 1787 and submitted to the states for ratification, not including the Bill of Rights, that served this objective as well. For example, there is a provision prohibiting the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus, the great writ of liberty, and as Thomas Jefferson and James Otis knew it. There is also a prohibition against ex post facto laws and bills of attainder, among other specific denials of authority.